Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Alex Hart here and it's that time of week again. Everybody's favorite video here on the channel, the power rankings of the MLB. Now, it's been a little while since we did it, about two weeks because of uh, the All-Star break and we took a, an extra little week off because there's only three games before last week. So we're going to be jumping into it. There's going to be a little bit of changes, but I went pretty much with a fresh board almost and trying to just throw in teams around based on how I think they're doing, where I think they're going, their chances at World Series, playoffs, etc. Bottom row was basically teams totally out of it. Second bottom row teams that are they're either up and coming, probably going to miss the playoffs up and coming, or probably going to miss play, uh, playoffs and on the downward slide. Playoff contenders, we have wild card playoff and then World Series contenders at the top. Before we do that, please take some time, go down there, like the channel, subscribe to the channel, and all that stuff. It really helps the channel grow. We've kind of slowed down over the past couple of weeks. My own fault, not making too many videos. So I want to ask you guys that are common, coming here often, what kind of videos would you like to see on this channel? Again, I'm an avid sports fan of all sports. Once football starts off, hockey, those kind of things, I'm going to be doing videos of that as well. So let me know what you guys want to see on the channel. But of course, the power rankings is going to continue to be a staple. Number 30, we'll kick things off. A fresh new number 30. Who is it going to be? Huh? We've got the Texas Rangers. Texas went 0-10 since the All-Star break, losing to Detroit, the Blue Jays, and Houston. 0-10. They've had a little bit of a rough start. At the beginning of the season, they were they were putting out a fight against almost all teams they've had. But I think the inexperience of their roster and the rotation and the bullpen are really starting to show. I think they're the weakest team in the MLB. That means these guys are moving up one slot. Arizona went one and two against the Cubs. They swept the Pirates, and then they went one and two against the Cubs again. A lot of credit to them. Their, their rotation has at least been good. They're offense over the course of the season has been a threat on most nights but when their pitching was pretty much hurt and not existent but they do have a couple staples in the rotation that they got to be excited to with moving forward with carol merrill kelly we got zach gallon and even bumgarner can win some from time to time so keep an eye on them they're probably only going to go up from here honestly number 28 who's it going to be it's the kansas city royals one and two against baltimore right after the break, so that kind of dropped them down. But then they're on a little bit of a win streak. They went 2-0 and against Milwaukee, and then they swept Detroit. However, it's five games, and they've been on a consistent slide down. Uh, I don't have a lot of faith. Their rotation's been awful all season. Their lineup, for the most part, going forward, I don't see a lot of, a lot of promise from their lineup. So right now, I think 28 for the Royals is very good. Moving on up, we got the Baltimore Orioles, number 27. They're on a little bit of a streak. They went 2-1 and one against Kansas City. They did lose the series against Tampa Bay, but then over this past weekend, they swept the Washington Nationals in the Battle of Maryland. Big step forward. Some of their big-name guys are starting to really step up at the top of their lineup to generate some offense, and people like Matt Harvey are actually pitching all right right now. So at least against if you put them up against any of these three teams, I would have the Orioles in that situation. Um, and even so, we might see them catching up even further as they start to get more competitive. The only thing really going against them is they're in the American League East, one of the, the toughest heavyweight divisions there is. So not a lot of wiggle room there, but at least they're practicing against the top teams. Next up, number 26, we got the Pittsburgh Pirates. They went 3-1 and one against the Mets before getting swept by Arizona, but then they beat the San Francisco Giants. So they're a team that's still looking for their first series sweep of the season. So that's really holding them back. They made a trade today, Adam Frazier on the move. So they're going to be selling, of course. That's probably going to result in them falling a little bit further down in the wind department. But overall, I think the future could potentially look good for Pittsburgh. They're just making the deals and building for the future. It's expected. They're still in a division that going forward, they might be able to compete in the next year or two. Number 25, got the Rockies. They went 1-2 and two against the Dodgers, 1-1 one and one against Seattle, and then 1-2 and two against the Dodgers again. So two series against the Dodgers since the All-Star break. And they managed to steal some wins along the way. They continue to have a decent record at home on the road, another story. Um, but I like some of their pitchers. Their offense has these nights where some guys can really step up. I think overall they're a little bit better than most people suspected this year. But at the same time, they're in the National League West so they can only go so high because they're going to keep getting beat down by the top three teams there. Moving along, we got 
Number 24, we got the Miami Marlins. One and three against Philly. One and two against Washington. And then they beat San Diego over the weekend. One of the games was somewhat controversial with the umpire. They squeezed the wins out against San Diego. But overall, I don't think uh, they're too much higher than this. They're last place in their division. They have a lot of ground to make up. And overall, their roster, their offensive roster, compared to the rest of their division, isn't quite there. They do have the starting pitching that is something they can build around going to the future. And they're, mind you, they're a playoff team last year with the extended playoff. And they still have a lot of room to grow and a lot of time, uh, potential guys to hop over. So 24, I think, is very justified. Number 23. We got the Chicago Cubs, two and one against Arizona, one and three against St. Louis, which is a key series that they lost. And then again, they won't be Arizona again. But at the end of the day, I think it's safe to say that the Cubs dynasty is coming to an end. We're coming up to that trade deadline where it's pretty much suspected that they're going to be trading uh, their guys. Um, yeah. Number 24, we got the Minnesota Twins, 0 and three against Detroit, two and two against the White Sox who are basically have become their rivals, and then they lost to the Angels over the weekend. I don't know much to say. The Twins have pretty much underperformed. They just traded Cruz this week. Pretty much given up at the Central at this point. They're just going to try and get some prospects, get what they can. Byron Buxton missing most of the season really hurt them. The rotation didn't really live up to what the expectations were. I think 22 is pretty much as far as they're going to fall. They could basically continue to play spoiler like they have been the past couple weeks. Number 21, we've got the Washington Nationals one and two against San Diego, then two and one against Miami, and then they got swept by Baltimore. Washington made a little bit of a run before the All-Star break. You had me even thinking that they had a chance at the division, um, but now I think the reality is starting to set in. And it came out today that they were going to, or yesterday or sometime this weekend, that they're willing to trade anyone. They're ready to sell. Uh, as long as your name isn't Juan Soto, you're on the market. So to me, maybe Trey Turner gets moved. Who knows? Washington number 21. Moving along, number 20. Slowly but surely, surely moving up. They had a nice seven-game winning streak, beating the Twins, um, uh, beating Texas four games, and but then they lost to Kansas City over the weekend. Don't hold a lot against them. They have consistently been above 500 for the last few weeks. And I think on a given day, their future is looking better than a lot of these teams that are below them. They have a rotation that's starting to form. And then going forward, while well, they're cutting their innings back this year, going forward in the next couple of years, if they can keep their growth, Detroit's going to be a team to watch out for. Watch for them to move up the power rankings in the next coming years, let alone maybe uh, the next couple weeks. Number 19, we have the Los Angeles Angels. 1-2 and two against Seattle. 0-2 oh against Oakland. And then they won over the weekend against Minnesota. But it was the early series against the division rivals that they didn't win. It really is going to hold them back. And now they're slowly slipping out of a chance at a wild card. There's a lot of teams that they have to hop over. And they're continuing to lose to the teams ahead of them, like Seattle and Oakland, like I just said. Trout missing the majority of the season. And Otani's very much cooled off, at least over the past week. We haven't heard his name thrown around a whole lot. Um, so 19, I think that's pretty much where the Angels are going to be sitting for the next little while, that kind of area. Number 18. Now the Cleveland Indians, and they're slowly falling down. 2-1 and one against Oakland, 1-2 and two against Houston, and then a rough series against Tampa Bay. They went 1-3 and three overall. The first 10 days back from the All-Star break, not looking good for Cleveland. They're now like nine games, eight and a half games back from the division lead, and about five, five games back from wildcard, and it keeps getting bigger. They just haven't been good since some of their starting pitchers has gone down. Specifically, Bieber's been out for now for a little while. They used to count on him for some wins. It's just not coming together for Cleveland. This is probably not going to be their year. Number 17, we got Atlanta Braves. One and two against Tampa. One and one against San Diego. And then two and two against their rivals, Philadelphia Phillies. They managed to squeeze one out today specifically to tie the Phillies. But long going with Acuna out and their offense really has to step up. Uh, I think it's a long way to go for them, but believe it or not, they're still in the hunt. Uh, if they're going to make the playoffs, they're going to have to win their division, and that's just the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so. Number 16, we got the Toronto Blue Jays, 3-0 and against Texas. They started the All-Star break after the All-Star break very well, but then they went 0-2 against Boston, which really hurt, and then lost the series to the Mets today. 
Again, they just can't seem to beat teams that are above 500 or ahead of them in the power rankings. They just can't win those series. They're going to play a bunch of games against Boston over the next two weeks. The rest of their games that they're going to face against Boston, if they can really somehow, they got to find a big win streak uh, if they're going to have a chance at the playoffs. They got to find a win streak and it's going to start against Boston in this coming series. They play four games coming up next. Number 15, we got the Cardinals 2 and 1 against San Francisco. 3-1 and one against the Cubs, but then 1-2 and two against Cincinnati. And that's the clutch series because if they were going to make a chance at this, they had to want to run. Cincinnati might have slowed them down, and this next week, pretty much do or die for the Cardinals. The Cardinals pretty much got to play 700 baseball the rest of the way if they're going to make it. But on a given day, I think they're going to be better than all the teams below them. They're right there, smack dab, average team. Good rotation that's pretty consistent, mediocre. Like Overall, they're the definition of an average team in my mind. Average pitching, average hitting, average bullpen. Cincinnati coming on next, number 14. Owen 3 against Milwaukee, 1 and 2 against uh, the Mets, and then they beat the Cardinals. They were on a heater coming into the All Star break, but coming out and getting swept by the Brewers really put a damper in things because they had gone into the break ahead, like beating the Brewers in the series right before the break, but then that sweep really knocked them down. And then losing to the Mets, another team that could potentially be uh, above them, 500. They just can't seem to get it going enough for them. Again, another average team putting them ahead of the Cardinals because they won over the weekend. Number 13, have the Philadelphia Phillies 3-1 and one against Miami, 0-2 oh, against the Yankees, and then 2-2 two two against Atlanta. They tied over the weekend, but I just think Philly has the rotation. They have Nola, they have Wheeler that's going to be really key in winning some key games down the stretch. So I just put them a little bit ahead of these teams. Mind you, I think all these teams are pretty much interchangeable at this point um, with Cleveland kind of being the cutoff. Um, but Phillies, what can you say? They have a shot. They're like four and a half back in the division. If anyone's going to catch the Mets, I would be betting on the Phillies. That's why I have them number 13. Number 12, highest they've been. All season two and one against the Angels, one and one against Colorado, and then most importantly, three and one against Oakland this past weekend. Huge, huge series. They beat Oakland three games in a row to close out the series, all one run games. So close on by the, the hair of their chinny chin chin. Oakland still holds the wild card spot, but they're nipping up the heels now, two and a half games out. Uh, I don't quite give them the edge, even though they beat Oakland, I still think Oakland on paper. And in performance, is the better team. Seattle just had a little bit of luck on their side this weekend. Number 11, I got the New York Yankees. 2-1 uh, one, one against Boston, 2-0 and oh against the Phillies. But then they lost pretty roughly this past weekend in Boston. 1-3. to three. And a couple of those games, they had leads and they blew it down the stretch. So Yankees realistically are the best team outside of the playoff picture right now. I think they're the best position to actually make a run at a wild card spot and honestly if the Yankees make the wild card they're going to be dangerous because they've Garrett Cole they've managed to survive this COVID outbreak Aaron Judge missing hasn't been back since the all-star break so all that stuff they've managed to survive they're in a position to make a run at it watch for them to be dangerous even though they had a rough series against Boston they're gonna they're gonna get past it number 10 I got the Oakland A's one and two against Cleveland, two and zero oh against the Angels, and then one and three against Seattle. They're hanging on to a top ten spot barely right now. Probably, if they don't turn things around, I'm gonna have to see a little bit fall down the middle. But their rotation overall for me is very consistent and solid part of their their team. And if I'm gonna bet on some of these teams, A's are gonna be the team over them right now, holding that wild card spot. But they gotta turn things around for sure. Number nine, New York Mets, one and three against Pittsburgh. 2-1 against Cincinnati, 2-1 against Toronto. Alonzo single-handedly took Toronto down this weekend, hitting a bunch of home runs. If he starts hitting up, heating up like the way he did two years ago, watch out. The Mets are going to be able to hold on to this division. The rotation, DeGrom, big question mark, what's going on there? They made some moves. They're, they're showing that they're interested. They're probably not done making moves, so I give them an edge to be able to hold on to that division. Number eight. San Diego Padres, 2-1 against Washington, 1-1 one one against Atlanta, and 1-2 and two against the Marlins. They're our best team. They made, they made the trade for um, names, uh, Adam Frazier. They made that a trade for him. They're trying to they're trying everything they can to really get a shot, right? But at this rate, they're going to be a wild card. Uh, so it's going to come down to basically a game of roulette against the Giants or the Dodgers, in my mind. 
and that's why they I have them so low. But I think realistically, they are a very good team. They'd be a top five team, but just based on the situation and the way of it's what's going to take them advance in the playoffs. I think eight is very fair for the Padres at this point. Uh, number seven, we've got Chicago White Sox two and one against Houston, two and two against Minnesota, and then they lost to Milwaukee over the weekend. This was pretty much the difference because I'm going to have uh, them up next. White Sox, uh, a little bit of concern there. I think uh, the rest of these teams ahead of them it will beat them on the most given nights. They did beat Houston, but it was close. It was a very close series. It could have went either way. And right now, I think the White Sox, uh, while they have their division pretty much all but, lo all but locked up, like it's locked up, uh, I think come playoff time when they have to face one of the other teams, they're going to be the underdog at this point, number seven. Number six, we got the Milwaukee Brewers on a little bit of a heater. 3-0 and against Cincinnati. They did get swept by the Royals, which was a little bit of a concern. 0-3, but then they beat, came back right and beat the White Sox in a big series uh, for themselves. They've been making moves. They've been adding offense. They've been dressing pretty much everything they can, and their rotation is one of the better ones in the league. And we all know uh, rotation is what matters in playoffs, especially because they're going to very likely win the division and be able to get to at least a nice five-game series. So that's going to be a good advantage for them, and they, they're they built for that kind of baseball. Uh, so look forward to that. Number five, we've got Tampa Bay Rays, 2-1 and one against Atlanta, 2-1 and one against Baltimore, and then 3-1 and one over the weekend uh, against Cleveland. Tampa Bay just continues to win series. They got the, the style of team built that is clutch. They're just offenses from anyone can get it done. One through nine, the rotation has really stepped up. And believe it or not, they traded out Rich Hill when I would have thought their rotation needed help with Glass not going down. They traded him out, and they managed to keep on trucking. So never going to count Tampa out. I've made that mistake enough on this channel. Always get flamed for it. It's Tampa at number five. Number four, we got Boston. One and two against the Yankees. Two and oh against Toronto. Three and one against the Yankees. It's just neck and neck between these two teams. All season long, it's been neck and neck. They're switching back and forth, back and forth. Probably the most tightly contested division all year long. Both the teams are very good. It's going to be unfortunate that one of them is very likely going to have to be a wild card spot, right? And whoever sneaks into the last wild card spot will play them. And one game series, it's going to be unfortunate that both these teams are kind of set up to have a nice long series. It's the style that they've built their rosters around, but one of them is going to have to face off. And one game elimination, which is going to be too unfortunate. Number three, we got the LA Dodgers two and one against Colorado, one and three against San Fran, and then two and one against Colorado again. Um, Dodgers just continue to win. They they just can't beat San Francisco. <laughs> they keep getting close to catching them, and then San Francisco knocks them back down a little bit. Very least, they're beating the teams below them. Other than that, and they're maintaining pace. It's only a matter of time. Um, there's no update really on Bauer. It's probably done for the season. So that's one thing that's going to hurt a lot. But their rotation has been great with Bueller and Urias just being very consistent, putting out two solid outings every five days. Watch for the Dodgers to really make a move there. Number two, San Francisco Giants, one and two against St. Louis, three and one against the Dodgers, and one and two against the Pirates. Couldn't bring them down because really they're still ahead of the Dodgers. They beat the Dodgers 3-1, to one, and there was a lot of concerns with Gosman. His last two innings have been a little rough, but I'm going to give them at least another week to turn things around. Not going to hold too much against the Pirates. Played them very well this past weekend, and San Francisco, they're still in first. We've got to give them credit for that. they got to play the Dodgers. they got to play the Padres, and they're still beating them. So at the very least, they're leading the way, number two, for sure, and that leaves us with number one, still number one in my books. The Houston Astros, one and two against the White Sox, two and one against Cleveland, and then three and zero oh against Texas over the weekend. I just think they're the best team. They're the most all-around surrounded team in the American League with pitching, with hitting, and with bullpen. They got the their division mostly unlocked compared to these two who have to compete for their division. Of course, the White Sox had it too, but I just think uh, Houston's the better team than the White Sox, even though the White Sox beat them two to one. In the series, I still have them having that slight edge. But there you have it. Power rankings. A lot of games that happened since our last power rankings. Most of these teams played 10 games. So quite a bit of switching up. Let me know what you guys think, what you guys disagree with, agree with, etc. etc. And we will see you for the next video. Thanks for watching.